My last video got cut off like always, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the statement. If you have an even function, then the function graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So symmetric just means that the mirror across the y-axis. So this part of the graph is a mirror of the other side of the graph across the y-axis. Okay. Let's look at f of x equals x to the third power and determine whether it's even or odd or neither by uh, the method we did in example 2. Then we'll put in the negative x there. And this is what happened. So I have this here. And that gives me negative x to the third. So I look at the original function and this function. It looks like it just changed its sign. So it's an odd function. Now if I were to go ahead and graph this function by making a table, this is what it would look like. Something like this. I'm going to draw the best I can on the iPad. You keep jumping on me. Okay, that's what it would look like. So let's look at what happened. Notice how I have the value of 2 here. So 2 went to 8. Well, I made the 2 negative. Because remember, this is what we're doing. We're taking the x and we're making it negative. When well, I made the 2 negative, Notice how my y value is negative 8. So it made my y value negative. So that's pretty cool. So the odd function, I make the x negative, then my y becomes negative. That's why the sign change here. Okay? So if you have an odd function, the function's graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. So that means that I look at this and the origin's right here. If I look at that, the metric means that it's a mirror across the origin. Here's the origin. And then the mirror would be the reflection. There's the other point right there. Okay. We'll talk more about odd and even functions when we get to chapter three, but I want you to be able to determine whether a function is even or odd by either plugging in the negative x and looking at the function um, for the most part. Let's look at some, something called a PY function and um, PY function is when you have a function that has multiple parts in it. So let me give you an example. A cell phone company offers the following plan. It costs you $20 per month to buy 60 minutes, and additional time costs 40 cents per minute. So what I have here is a function. The cost of your cell phone is based on how much uh, minutes you use or how much time you use on the phone. So the cost is going to equal $20. So it's going to be $20 if you talk between 0 and 60 minutes. So between 0 and 60 minutes. So if the time is between 0 and 60, you're going to just pay $20. That's your function. That's how much it's going to cost. It's going to cost you $20 plus 40 cents per minute. But that's not 40 cents, that's 4 cents. 40 cents. If you talk more than um, or additional time, more than 60 minutes. So any additional time beyond 60 minutes can cost you 40 cents a minute. So you don't want to get double charged there. So they they want to look at your time after you use the first 60 minutes. We can pay 40 cents for any additional minutes over 60. So if you use 61 minutes, you're going to pay 61 minus 60, which is one. You can pay one additional minute. And then that would be time 40 cents. That's what this represents. It's any minutes um, more than 60. Okay? And that's only true if t is greater than 60. So what we have here is your cost is going to be constant. Constant means it's not going to change. It's going to be constantly $20 as long as you're between 0 to 60 minutes. So that's what this is representing here. It costs me constant at 20. Once you hit um, more than 60 minutes, that's when your cost can go up. And that's what's represented right here. A function that's defined by two or more equations over a specified domain is called a piecewise function. And one of the most one of the topics that I have to cover in this course is our piecewise function. That's gonna definitely be on your final exam. Okay. Use a function that describes the cell phone plan above to find and interpret each of the following. Cost of 30. Well, if you have the cost of 30. The time is 30 minutes. You have two options. You either use this option up here or here. That 30 
is your t-value. And 30 is going to represent one of these values here. It's going to fit in one of these domains. 30 is between 0 and 60. So I'm going to use this function right here, and it's just going to be $20. That should make sense. If I only use 30 minutes, it should only cost me $20. Now, what is the cost if, you know, it was A, what is the cost is if it's 100 minutes? Well, your T value is 100. So 100 is definitely greater than 60, so I have to use this function right here. So the cost for 100 minutes is going to be $20 plus 40 cents times 100 minus 60. So it's going to be 20 plus 40 cents times 40. That, what that means is if you spend, if you use 100 minutes, You've already paid for the first 60 minutes and that $20. You're going to pay um, 40 cents for each additional minute above the 60, and that's the 40 minutes. That's where the 40 comes from. And that's why we have to do 100 minus 60. Okay. So when I do that, um, I get 20 plus 16, and I get 36. So if you use 100 minutes, will cost you $36 and if you use 30 minutes um, it will cost you $20 okay so on your own go ahead and do um, A and B real quickly and figure out which function you have to use then we'll go ahead and move on to the next topic Okay, so if you use 40 minutes, it's going to cost you just $20, and if you use 80 minutes, it's going to cost you $28. I didn't write sentence out for those, but you could um, on the test if you need to. Okay, so we're still on the same topic. I said next topic. Really, we're on the same topic, piecewise function, and this is what's going to be on your um, your exam for sure, and on your final exam, I have one like just like this, so make sure you know how to do this problem. Graph the piecewise function defined by f of x equals x plus 2 if x is less than or equal to 1, and f of x equals 4 if x is greater than or equal to 1. There are a couple ways to do this, um, and I'll show you one way today, and then later on, so that's you can find it, uh, maybe a quicker way to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a table for each of these separate p5 functions. Okay, so I'm going to make a table. I'll make a table for the first function. The first function is x, f of x equals x plus 2, and that if x is less than or equal to 1. So I'll put that in a little caveat there. We'll get some ordered pairs. And then the second function is f of x equals 4. The order pair is there. And this one is x has to be greater than 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start with 1 here. And I get some order pairs. I'm going to keep getting the equal sign there. Equal 1 plus 2. And I get 3. So I get 1, 3, 2. Oh, less than 1 would not be 2. Less than 1 would be like 0. So I get 0 plus 2, which is 2, and then negative 1. And you can do this for a couple points. You have to do a lot of points, just enough to get an idea of what the graph looks like. Negative 1, 1, and negative 2. Negative 1 plus negative 2 is uh, negative 2, comma. Oh, I feel like I did something wrong. Oh, that was the wrong number in there. So negative 2 in there, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, okay. and then I keep going, etc. Now here I have, I'm going to, even though the x has to be greater than 1 for this function right here, I'm still going to use 1, but I'll make sure it's an open circle. This one's going to be a closed circle. That one's a critical point in terms of what we're trying to graph here. So I'm going to use 1 here, so I get f of 1 equals 4, so I get 1, 4. Greater than 1 would be 2, so f of 2 equals 4. Notice how in this column here, it's going to always be 4. We'll talk more about that in the next chapter. Actually, the next section, I believe. Next few sections. So you might see a pattern here, 4, 4, 5, 4, etc. Go ahead and graph this, and I'm going to do this first function here. And I have 1, 3, which is right there, and it's a closed circle. I told myself it would be a closed circle. 0, 2, negative 1, 1, 
negative 2, 0, and etc. This is going to be this line right here. You know if I put an error on this end because it's going to go on forever. If I pick negative 3, then I would have negative 3 plus 2, which would be negative 1. So it would be negative 3, 1, and that would have been right. Uh, did I do that math right? Negative 3, negative 1. And that would be right here. Negative 3, negative 1. So my line's a little off. Let me go ahead and redraw that then. Okay, so I have erase this. The negative 3, negative 1 is right there. So I'll just put it off on my line there. Okay. And then the other graph here, I have open circle at 1. So here's 1, 4, open circle. Then I have 2, 4, which is right here. 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4. You notice how it goes on forever that way. P5 function knows how there's two parts to that function. And it's very important that you have um, an open circle for here. Because for the second part, this function right here, right here, x is greater than 1. We don't want to include the 1. Greater than 1 would be right here and here, and here, and here, but not at 1 right there. Uh oh, did I leave my video there? Let's see if I can get back there. There we go. Okay, some questions here. Is it a function? And the answer is yes, because if I put a vertical line up and down, that never touches more than one point in the graph. Even at this line right here, it touches just this point right there. So yes. Is it continuous? The answer is no, because it actually does not continue right here. What is the range? Like the lowest point for y is down here, and it goes on forever, so it's negative infinity. Then it goes all the way up to 3. We're going to include the 3. This is, this is a symbol for or. 4. And we're going to include the number 4. So there's the 4 there. Y could be 4. What is it increasing? Um, it is increasing from here all the way up to here. So it's going to go from negative infinity all the way to 1. We're going to close that bracket. Because, again, it's increasing from here to here. And what x value does that happen? It happens from negative infinity all the way to 1. The bracket there. When is it constant? It's constant from here to here. So the x values are from 1 to infinity. And um, actually, I made a mistake here. When is it increasing? Remember we talked about how whenever we talk about increasing and decreasing, we never include the endpoints there. Because at 1, it's increasing this side, but not on the other side of 1. So hopefully you caught my mistake. And when is it constant from here to here? So from 1 to infinity, and we do parentheses around there. Okay, so on your own, let's go ahead and try this problem here. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and then I'm going to have you check your answer. Okay, so when I graph the function, after I made the table, and I made the table very similar to what I did the last example, example four, and um, again, where everything is critical is at the negative one, when x is negative one. So when x is negative one here, I had a closed circle up here because in the original um, problem, I had less than or equal to negative 1. So I included the negative 1 when uh, the y value was 3. So there's that graph right there. And then the other um, one had x greater than negative 1, so that's this graph right here. Okay? If you have any questions, make sure you email me, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. And this is the end of section 2.2 uh, uh, basic or more on functions and their graphs.